Hello everyone, welcome to another Reaper Vlog tutorial. Today we have a very special guest, Scott Hansen, also known as Tycho. If it doesn't work the first time, don't stress, don't stress. He's going to show us how he uses Super 8 for live looping inside of Reaper. Scott, welcome to the show. Super excited to talk to you about Super 8 because I know very little about it. I've never been able to wrap my head around it. And as far as I know, you use it very fluently and you use it live. So interesting to uh, talk about this with you. Yeah, thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan. I, you know, I think I learn, I've learned so much over the years from, from your videos, just cause it's like, you've, I've used, I, th I think I started in like 2009 and you know, like you think you've mastered something and, and really you're just doing the same things the same way. And then I'll watch one of your videos yeah. and be like, oh wait, <laughs> like I've literally been doing it wrong for 10 years. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> it's, it's always super helpful. Yeah, no. And I always get a lot of ideas like that from talking to other users and you know, doing one-on-one -on -one calls or interviews, it's like I'm always learning, and and that's one of the greatest things about Reaper is there's so many ways to do anything. There's you know you can meet the same endpoint from 15 different paths, and uh, I think that's what keeps it interesting for us. Totally. I mean, yeah, but that's the you know the that's another one of those like long enough rope to hang yourself <laughs> type situations. You know, it's like there's so many options sometimes. The mix engineer I work with, he he now will use Reaper to mix them so I can get the mix back intact and and kind of like produce into the mix once it, that layer's on there, you know, with all the plugins intact. I see the frustration from somebody else's perspective coming from Pro Tools or something that's a lot more rigid and and is kind of all about this very defined workflow. And it's like, wait, so I did this and this happened, but you said this and it's like, oh yeah, you can do it that way too. But then this will happen and you have to do this, this, and it's like this, yeah. it just never ends. You got to enjoy the process. Yeah. I love it, but you know, I, lo I love tweaking on computers. So, but yeah. yeah. It's, it's definitely not for everyone, but when you've hit those those barriers with the other apps and there's no other way around it other than wait six months for the next update and maybe they'll have that feature for you but yeah you know by that time you can learn reaper pretty quickly and move on now yeah when i jumped from cakewalk that's exactly kind of the calculus that i did is like i can keep like banging my head against the wall for for a few years here or or just jump ship and it yeah it took like a month i think to really to really get it but yeah it's uh it's, it's definitely, it's deep. As for, as for super looper, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm, a, I'm actually a new super looper user. Like I'm sure there's deeper levels like Justin, he's, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of this stuff is built specifically for him and his workflow. And if your workflow yeah. happens to mimic his workflow, you're in luck. If it doesn't, you know, <laughs> you're going to have to figure it out. I think we've gone a little bit into the weeds already. Um, <laughs> Can we get a quick overview of what is Super 8? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> for, for someone that's never seen it before. Right, right. What is Super 8? Okay, yeah, Super 8 is a looper. So it, it's kind of like a guitar looper, but you could put any instrument through it. It's just essentially sets of cells or one cell at a time. You can have up to eight mono or four stereo. And, uh, and you have a cell and you essentially have record. So right now you would be recording a loop of audio then once you hit that again, you, you go into play mode and it's playing back that loop and then you can stop it. Those are the core functions that, that I use. And, uh, and, you know, like anything with Reaper, it has multiple outs. So you can bus each cell to its own track and do, you know, you can EQ each track differently, have different effects on each track. It's basically like a little multi-track recorder looper. I hadn't used tons of loopers at all until very recently. And I, I decided I wanted to start um, using loopers for... In, in my process. And so I started, I tried like Chase Bliss's uh, blooper, which I absolutely love. And I think is a great writing tool and a great like improvisational kind of like try stuff out and get weird effects. It came down to, it really wasn't even about workflow. It was more about, I wanted stereo, which that narrowed it way down to, to the amount of loopers available. And I, then I realized the power of having it in the box and, and sync to the timeline and all those things was just far outweighed anything I would get by having a piece of hardware. And then so I tried all these software solutions and really, you know, in Ableton and, and all these different things, and they just didn't really kind of work. Not many software loopers really mimicked the hardware looper. 
and, and so I never found this, this, you know, happy medium where it had all the power of software with, with like kind of this raw, uh, functionality, visceral functionality of like the hardware where like you click something, it records, you click it again, it stops. The big breakthrough for me was linking record and play. If you set those both to the, to the same CC, it mimics that functionality where it basically will just step through the mode. So yeah, I don't have the, the button hooked up right now, but um, basically hitting the same button will cycle through the mode. So you hit the button once, it records, you hit it next, it releases record and it just starts playing back. You hit it again and it stops. Basically that's all I really want from a looper is that I want one button that's do, that does those three things and then I want like a kill button and, and that's pretty much it. I have a stop all and play all so it's non-destructive because you, you don't have the, the re-record on the, on the, you know, once you hit the play button three times. But other than that, that's, that's pretty much all I'm using as you can see from, uh, from these mappings here. It's a little hard to see here. Okay. That's the thing about the, <laughs> the interface is it's so tiny, but basically, you know, as with all things Reaper, the right mouse button it can be your friend here. And uh, the thing that I didn't understand is that you can change these CCs just by holding down the right mouse button and dragging up or down like a volume slider. So I don't know if yeah. you can see that, but basically the CC is changing. So it's going to listen to any incoming CC, but not like on a, on a um, control path level, like a, uh, which I'm, I'm glad because I don't like when things are, are, for, are stuck in the control path. Um, so this is just, you can bring in, uh, if you look down here, I have all of my hardware inputs are um, right here and the foot controller is being um, bust over to super eight. Basically I like to like, I, I don't know what the word for it be, but, but like to abstract all my inputs on, when doing the live thing. Cause you know, if something goes wrong, Everywhere that the virus goes, I don't want to have to flip through all these tracks wherever it arrives, depending on the song. I just want to flip the inputs on one thing if I have to swap out an interface or, or who knows, you know, whatever, just some situation where it's 15 min minutes before the show. So um, I, I just bring everything to a folder with, with all the hardware inputs and, and then uh, have them on sends. So I'm sending basically the MIDI um, from the foot controller up to, you know, to control this on a MIDI level. Um, it's just coming into this and I have Super 8 on an instance. I just put this in a folder for kind of for convenience and also to have like some bus effects on here so I can do washouts. Like if I, if I want to kind of fade out of a, of a loop performance, um, I have this nice little filter, which is the cool thing about this is you can put it on one knob. And if you turn to the right, you know, like a kind of like a DJM mixer, um, it turns into a high pass yeah. and low pass and it's free and it's, it's nice and then black hole, you know, super eight, basically it's super flexible in the sense that you can bus, um, you know, these are all different tracks. So I I'm capturing the output of each of these individually. This is reading from this cell. It's built to be an eight track mono looper, but, um, you can link cells, uh, into stereo. And now with the new feature, you can actually, um, you know, when you say add to project, it used to add eight mono tracks, even if you had them linked, but now, um, it adds them as stereo files to the, to the timeline, which is, which is super helpful. The kind of core functions are have, which is half the, the loop. So if you recorded eight bars, you can quickly have that into four bars. Double will actually take whatever you've just recorded and uh, and double it, so you would get 16 bars. Double no repeat, I believe it doubles it without. I've never, I don't use that, but it, I think it just puts silence on the end of eight bars, which is kind of helpful for uh, kind of like adding a second part. Um, crossfade shorten loop, I have no, <laughs> I have no idea what that does. Uh, I I feel like I read about it once, but then I didn't use it enough to re to remember it. Play all will just play all the um, the tracks. Uh, record play selected is cool. And this is how Justin uses it. If you watch his videos, I have individual play and record buttons for each set of cells or each cell. He actually does it contextually where he's, he's selecting cells. So in that case, you, you can select a cell, which you can, you can map each one. You can map a, um, a CC or, or a program change or, or whatever, or even a note, um, to select that cell. That way you could basically have less buttons on your foot controller, I guess. You, you wouldn't have to have four play yeah. ones. And then add to project is super cool. I started using this for um, performance, you know, the idea of live performance, but I quickly was like, wait, this is like the best writing tool ever for Reaper. And I just started like writing all these parts because it's recording, you know, high quality audio into here, not like through a pedal and you're not having to like put it on an SD card. And it's just sitting in there in a buffer. And then once you, 
once you hit add to project, it actually lays all those waves onto your timeline in Reaper and it, you know, aligned to the time and, and everything. And even if you're in free sync mode, it'll actually, um, and we'll go through those later, but uh, it'll actually like put in a tempo marker after it detects the length of your loop and, and it'll put a tempo marker in and, and change the mark, the, the project tempo. So it's like, it's just this really fluid way to quickly start writing ideas. You know, it's like a little old, like four track recorder, I guess you could compare it to. It feels like there's a lot of stuff you can do, but it really depends on having a foot switch or maybe a pad controller just to do anything with it. Using this with the mouse would be pretty tricky, I think. With a guitar in hand and, a, and hitting the mouse, that's not going to work. Yeah, no, I, I, and I don't think there's really a point in that. I mean, there is a latch mode um, where I, I believe, you know, it'll, it'll basically, you can hit record and it won't start until the next, the beginning of the next bar or the next beat or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, I think Justin does that in his videos. I think that's actually how he uses it. He'll hit it and then it'll it'll hit the first beat and then he'll start playing. But um, yeah, I, I use it with a foot controller, um, just like a little MIDI. I forgot who makes it. I'll, I'll send you a picture of it. But uh, it's, you know, just anything will work that sends MIDI because it'll respond to CCs. So like I have mine set up on CCs, but you can, it'll respond to those program changes or note numbers, you know, just notes. So you can hook it up to, Virtually anything that'll send MIDI. This only records audio, and does this work without Reaper Transport running? It only records audio. Yeah, it doesn't record MIDI yet. I, I hope someday it does. It'll be amazing. So it will run in either mode. So right now I have sync off, which like for part of the set, I just don't want. I don't want the timeline running. I don't want to be worrying about what the tempo of the track is. This way I can just jump and just start jamming basically. So that's sync off, and then. Uh, oh, do I have this locked? Sorry, I have this locked to um, automation, right? So I'm gonna have to do it here. So the cool thing that they just added was the ability to automate the sync mode. Um, and you'll watch, basically, this is off and you'll be looking right here, this tiny, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Or you can also see it um, in here, but that's sync off. This is sync to project. So that's going to sync to the BPM of the project and then sync playback is syncing to the BPM of the project and it will not function or start doing anything until playback has initiated. And once that's initiated, I have this countdown thing on, um, on screen at all times. You can, you can turn that on and off, on or off. I think it's this one. Yeah. Um, and you can have an offset. I'm not sure what that is. I guess, I guess like, I don't know, <laughs> you know, like if you, if you wanted to like have some delay on it or something. The length is uh, is literally just the length of the loop, which you know in in free sync mode that's irrelevant. Or no, actually free sync that still matters. But um, basically, I have it set up to to some automation. So depending on what song it is, you know, I know like for certain songs, I know I just want an eight bar loop, and you can you can automate that now. And that that's a new thing too that that they just added. And this live set is all on a singular timeline. I used to run in tabs, project tabs, but um, you know, there's, there's some advantages to that as well, but this, this helps me kind of keep everything consolidated. So this allows me like per song to have different settings. Very cool. So Scott, can you tell me about the, the routing into this? I know you, you've probably set this up in a way that's not, maybe not typical, um, because of the way that you run your live sessions. I mean, the routing super flexible, just like any, um, Plug in with Reaper, you know, you have the pins. For my thing, I'm always recording in on one and two because I'm using the same instrument. If you were, say, using a, you know, a drum kit and then you had a guitar and a bass, you know, or if you had a band situation, you could set each of these cells to be listening to um, individual channels. I have, if you see right here, I have cell one and two is, is channels one and two and, and same with cell three, four, five, six. And actually I lied. I do have one other, the kind of flexible channel is, is the last two cells. And that's like my synth channel. So I have my mini Moog hooked up to that. If I ever want to basically play that allows me three stereo tracks of guitar stuff. And then I can like overdub some synths, uh, at the end. So I have that piped in from an, a different channel. And then, um, right here, I have them all bust out to, uh, to all the eight outputs. And then I have these tracks, headers, I guess you would call them. These are buses, you know, they're, they're basically reading in, um, you know, this one's reading in one and two, this one's reading in three and four coming to one and two. So, yep. you know, it's just basically bussing them out so that you have, after that you have individual volume, 
And uh, cause yeah, I have a knob box hooked up that basically controls, makes this into a little four track mixer. Can't quite see which track actually has the, uh, the super eight on it. Uh, that's just living down here um, at, on the instrument track. Okay. It's inside the folder. Yeah, yeah. And this has no parent sends because we don't want any audio exiting uh, that plugin. This is just pulling in audio. Yeah, and receiving is is from your separate uh, input hardware inputs folder. Well, no, it's the the hardware inputs are totally disconnected. I never read directly from those. Those are going into effects racks basically. So, like my guitar, for instance, mm. will go into this effects rack, which will then um, feed its own outputs to Super Eight, and then also you know, ah. and then you know my then I can choose song by song if I want my effects returns, like my reverb return is separate from that. And, and so I can, I can, you know, automate the send level of that. I want to hear the reverb in my headphones, but I don't want it to be captured by the reaper, by the, uh, by super eight, you know, that's a huge advantage over using hardware, all the plugin flexibility, all the automation stuff you can do. Oh yeah. Different parts of the songs can all be set up different, completely differently. Yeah, it's huge. And you can record the outputs. You know, I'm recording the outputs of Amplitude. That's what I use for, uh, for my live, um, for my amp. Um, I have like a front end of, of a, the Apollo's on the front end doing a little bit of kind of just like analog DI stuff. Um, I think I just have the Neve 1073 and then I come into this, this chain and then that goes to sends. And yeah, you can just, you can do really cool stuff because I'm actually, and that's the other thing, I have a MIDI foot pedal, expression pedal hooked up to the reverb send. So I can actually be pushing and pulling reverb in and out of, um, of Super 8 on the fly. I never think of doing things like that. I always think of, of using the foot switch or a, a expression pedal for like input fading in or like as a, the wah pedal. Yeah. But I never think of it as, or for controlling sends send levels. Yeah. This is kind of the first time I've ever done that. I, yeah, I have like a, you know, a volume pedal on the front of my guitar or you know, as my input for the guitar. And, um, so yeah, I typically think of those as in the same way, but then for this project, um, I started this project for the new year's, I did this new year's live stream. Um, and, uh, and that was like kind of the impetus for all this. And, uh, I don't know what occurred to me. I think I saw the Lele <laughs> expression pedal and I was like, that's the coolest looking expression. <laughs> Cause I've broken so many expression pedals on, on tour and I got that one, um, and I used to use them for the filter on the Mini Moog. So I was searching mm -hmm. for like a better made one, and then I got that, and it had USB. And I don't know why, like, you know, because typically you would have to, you with an analog expression pedal, you would have to get a box that converted that to MIDI, which, you know, most most MIDI yeah. foot pedals have an, an expression input, but it never clicked. And then when I got the Lele, and it just, or Layla, or however you say it, it just had a USB out, and I don't know why, but that was when I was like, oh, wait, yeah, I could just <laughs> use this to do anything. Yeah. I think there's three potential scenarios. You basically have a free looping situation where transport could be stopped, could be started, but you don't want to be dependent on that. You want to be able to just, you know, jump jump to some point and and just start jamming. So that's free sync. Sync is off, um, and you're not really worried about any of that stuff. Then the second scenario would be uh, sync being on and and connected to playback, um, where you know, like if you're if you're playing a song and you just want to dip in and dip out, but like at unknown points. Um, and just start recording and have it loop. That's that's how I do that. But then I ended up hitting this third scenario, which is a scenario where you know the exact places you're going to play, the exact times you're going to loop. Like a song, let's say I have this song where basically the guitar part comes in and out, but it's the same guitar part over and over again. So I just play it as the intro to the song. It's eight bars or four bars, something like that. And then once it's captured it just keeps going for the rest of the song locked to the timeline. And I'm automating volume in and out for when it needs to come out. But for the most part, I need to go play synth. So I can't sit there like playing it the next time. So it just keeps looping. Yeah. And then the other problem is I need to be at this other station uh, and I can't necessarily hit the record and, and stop buttons exactly the way I wanted. And plus I kept, <laughs> when I did, I kept screwing up. So the really cool mm. thing about having this in the box, you know, um, is that you have full control over all the functions. So right here, you can see with this song, I basically come to a, a marker action that pauses. You know, when you queue up the song, I, I'll run all my kind of like prep stuff, you know, setting patches and stuff in the background during that, you know, from here to here. And then once yep. you hit playback, it kills, which is a safety, basically it kills any content that was in the looper, potentially from a song you were playing before that gets erased. And then yeah. right here, this note basically triggers um, or I think it's a CC actually, it triggers playback 
right on the one. So there's no way you're going to screw it up. So I can just listen to the click in my headset, which is I'm, I'm hearing a, a click track, just play my part. Um, looks like it was eight bars. And then I don't, I can walk over to the synth and not have to worry. I used to have to stop this or no, that's right. I play a guitar right after this. So it, it basically stops the recording and I can go straight into the, the next guitar part without having to worry about clicking and then playing, you know, cause I felt like I was just always screwing that up. So like, it's cool cause you can basically create these windows for yourself and these windows of recording and, and looping and not have to um, be it in any certain place, you know, it, it'll just happen for you. Yeah, I've, I've actually tried to set up Reaper with a foot switch outside of Super 8, um, just trying to do transport functions with action markers and regions. And there's always some point where either it stops too early or it stops recording too late, or you, you get this dropout. It doesn't, it's not seamless. And when you're switching tracks, there's always some sort of dropout. It never loops cleanly. Totally. If I ever want to get looping working, I'm going to have to get into Super 8 and with CCs because having things like this where you put in, well, I guess your action markers are controlling the transport, but the CCs uh, on MIDI items in a track are controlling Super 8 for you. So you don't necessarily need a foot switch uh, as long as you can kind of plan out these things in advance. As long as you know where you're going to be wanting to play and you're not, you know, if it's a song where it's a known space that you're going to be playing in. But so my experience with marker action is the same. And, you know, like technically, I guess it's SWS. It's not Vanilla Reaper. Um, but you'll notice, yeah. I mean, I don't know how much you can see this, but this is a stop action for uh, 473, whatever, 40,073. Uh, and so, or a pause action. So you see that? see that distance between those two? So, you know, markers just, marker actions just are imprecise by nature, I've, I've noticed. Yeah. But with Super 8, it, it's super precise. Like, I, I was like, oh, maybe I'm going to have to cheat this a little bit ahead of time, but it's it's dead on. Like, it's the latency's negligible. I was going to ask about that, if it has to be earlier. No, it's, it's just, I have it right here. I mean, I might not be... No, I just have it locked right to the, to the one and it, it works perfectly. So yeah, I thought I'd have awesome. to worry about that because I was so used to, to marker actions, but, um, but yeah, this is, you know, this is definitely, it's just a, it's just hitting a, a parameter within the, the looper and there's, there's no weird action loop going on. So thank you so much, Scott. This has been really interesting. Great to talk to you. And, uh, I'm sure that the audience is, has been loving this as well. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Good. Always good talking Reaper. Is there anything you want to plug before we go? Yeah, I've been developing all this for a show um, I'm doing in Brooklyn at the Brooklyn Mirage on the 23rd of uh, this month. Um, yeah, so so stoked to try this out in front of <laughs> in front of a live studio audience and see if it works. I should mention that you had a podcast for, uh, last year, live streaming occasionally on Twitch. Um, links to everything will be down below, and uh, yeah, stream Tycho on your favorite streaming platform. Thanks. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.